Now, it was a heartbreaking loss for India at the World Cup final. It was something that a lot of the country, a lot of the fans really couldn't come to terms with. It also left a lot of critics, a lot of commentators a little puzzled. But yes, there are answers for this loss. It was a loss that wasn't, that no one saw coming. A team that was undefeated, yes, the chances of a team being undefeated and winning a World Cup title is rare. But everyone probably thought this would be one of those moments. A team that is 10 on 10, reaching a final against a very formidable side. And that's what, in the end, is what we got to witness. India falling short to a team that really pulled out a resilient performance. That team that fell back on its legacy of being tenacious to come out on tops and win their sixth World Cup title. Now let's look at five reasons, according to me, why India came up short and lost this particular World Cup final. In no particular order, at number five, I would probably say it's a very interesting number. It's based off a very interesting number I came across. The win-loss ratio of the Indian cricket team at ODI World Cups, and this is accumulative of the last three ones. 28 matches, 24 wins, and just four losses. That tells you something. It's got the best win-loss ratio compared to every other team, but it didn't win a World Cup title because it ended up losing the country ended up losing the key knockout matches. That leads me to the first reason. Is India not able to close out some of those key moments, those key phases, which is what decides a winner from a loser? We always talk about different sporting disciplines where the true champions are those who can really play under pressure and come out trumps in those key moments. You see a scoreline in a tennis match, it could be very, very, it could be 6-4, but it, the difference is just that one point, that one break that you have managed to score, which is where India probably came out Trump, came out um, underconfident. Again, I would look back at what the previous uh, winning teams ended up doing, you know, a couple they've led side or a MS Dhoni led 2011 team. They always came out with that one extra factor, that one X factor to change things and to make something in, out of nothing which is where this particular team probably fell short. Not raising their levels or raising their game to that crunch pressure situation to close it out and really consider themselves a champion side. Moving on to reason number four. And this is probably something that maybe you come to think of it in hindsight. India batting in that particular pitch was not easy. It was difficult. And maybe that phase where you have a, a, someone like a KL Rahul and a Virat Kohli really looking good, having studied the innings, Virat having just scored a half century and you would think that they would have probably stepped their foot on the accelerator and tried to um, try to up the ante and try to increase that run rate and get the runs going there. The fact that they managed to score the least number of fours and a joint low score in fact regarding the number of boundaries that they achieved in decades in ODI history just tells a story. In a World Cup final win even if the conditions weren't really that favourable to putting up a massive score, not being able to hit those big shots, to really um, accelerate at the right point, probably was something that may have gone against India. And that leads me on to reason number three, the reason why someone like a Virat or a KL Rahul couldn't really play uh, that much more freely and were tending to be more sensible, tending to be more cautious is because of the team combinations that they fell back on or they practiced from the time Shami entered the playing 11 and Hardik Pandya got injured. They were a batter shot and you really sense that so much more in the World Cup final because that was the last proper recognised pair. After that you were getting into the all-rounders category. So you really needed these two to stick around which was playing in their minds clearly which is why they didn't play that, many, that much more freely and the kind of cricket became more safe rather than getting uh, to be getting the strike rate up or getting those big shots out. Which is where, again, is that the perfect, the, the perfect combination? We don't know. They got, it got them to the final. It got them all those wins. So this possibly is another reason that compounded to that loss. Moving on to reason number four. I'll have to look at India's bowling. It's poss it has been the best in the entire tournament. The unit has been one of the most high-performing units of the entire tournament. But when you look at the fielding that supports a bowling performance, that probably fell short when you look back at the way Australia attacked India right from the word go. In that first innings, Pat Cummins said that he wanted to silence the crowd. They pounced on every possible shot. They cut, off, cut out every possible ball that could go for an extra run, for that boundary. 
they really intensified the pressure, kept it tight, built a cauldron of um, intense atmosphere there that made India slow down their pace and really slow things, things down for the country which is exactly what India couldn't manage to translate. Those unlucky leg buys, those misses, those freakish boundaries, extra runs there. And as the condition also started getting a little better, they, were managed, to, they managed to get those constant ones and twos, which is what really let the pressure off their own side and put the pressure on the bowling side. That was reason number four. And the fact that they really couldn't attack when someone new came in, like Manus Labushain, Maybe if they had built that much more pressure, which is why, again, I go back to someone like MS Dhoni. You know, when the situation is trying to slip away from you, he would always make that interesting bowling change, that interesting field placement to try and make something, to create something out of nothing, which is possibly what led away from India's side, if I could put it that way. It's something that probably slipped away and the pressure was probably intensifying a lot more at that point. Moving on to reason five then. Could it be the pitch? Were we in, was, was the Indian cricket team thinking a little too much about the conditions there and about the pitch there to try and see what uh, could be done to favour India more. They probably made it, that probably made it more heavily reliant on the outcome of the toss at the end of the day. You know, even though Rohit said he might have actually gone on to bat first, the, it didn't play out the way the Indian think tank, think tank wanted it to play out. It didn't slow down, the, wicked, the pitch didn't slow down like it had in Kolkata. It in fact got better, which is what something they didn't foresee. So they were leaving it too much to some other factors rather than their own strength. Is something that probably comes into my mind then. So these were my five reasons why possibly India missed out on that World Cup title one more time. It hurts a lot more because it comes from a team that was really possibly one of the best ODI outfits. But this particular World Cup, yes, will be talked for for days to come, for weeks to come, because it has seen some of the best cricket. It has seen some stunning performances, not just from the Indian team or the Australian sides that made it to the final, but also a lot of all-round performances from the entire team that made this Cricket World Cup a very interesting one for the annals of history books.